Hi, my name's Jamie Stanford, and I've been running a pool table business, Liberty Games, for the last 20 years. Is it really 20 years? The good news is that during that time, we've been asked loads of questions about buying a pool table. And in this video, we want to try and run through all the key things you want to consider before you make that purchase. The video runs through quite a lot of different topics, so we're going to timestamp the video, which will allow you to jump to different sections if the bit that we're talking about isn't relevant for you. So here's what we're going to run through in earnest. We're going to look at a brief comment on all the different categories of pool table out there. Pool tables have covered quite a lot of different niches over the years, and you might just find one that you didn't know existed. Then we need to look at what room size you need to accommodate a pool table. From that point, we're going to start to go to the forks in the road. This is when decisions have to be made. So you might want to consider MDF tables or slate. We'll be looking at British tables versus the American pool table game. We'll also look at dedicated sports tables versus pool dining tables. And we'll look at how your table will be delivered and how long it might take for that table to be delivered. Also, we're going to look at seeing if your table can be delivered upstairs or not. Um, and then finally, just other things you might want to consider purchasing to get the best out of your table. And we'll also explain what accessories you get with your table. So there's quite a lot to cover, and I think we should get going. In this section, I want to briefly run you through the various categories that a pool table can fall into. Pool tables have been around for a while and they fall into quite specific niches and there may be some that you haven't heard of before and might want just a brief explanation about. So the first ones to talk about are MDF or wood bed tables. Uh, these generally start in the lower price categories and they have a wooden or MDF board as the bed of the table. It makes it easier to move around in the home and it tends to be the first type of table people buy. Linked to MDF or wood bed tables are folding leg tables. Now the clue's in the name, but the folding leg systems allow you to store the table in places where other fixed leg tables wouldn't be able to. Now most folding leg tables are wood bed only, simply because then the weight isn't too extreme that you might get on a slate bed table, so you can still fold it safely and move it around. Next are slate bed tables. These are the type of tables that you may have played on if you've played pool in a pub or maybe a pool club. Now these have an actual slate bed. The play surface is made of a piece of slate or a piece of rock, and that gives you the truest possible play that you can get on a pool table. These pool tables also have a little bit more in terms of body structure uh, just to take the weight of the slates, but we'll be talking about those further down the line in the video. The next category is pool dining tables. These popular dual purpose tables have their cabinet modified so that you can get your knees under it and sit round the table to eat. And they have dining tops that sit on top of the table. Next up are American tables. These are normally found in eight foot or nine foot. So they're quite a bit larger than your average British table. They have bigger pockets, bigger pool balls, and we're gonna go right into more depth on those later on down in the video. Luxury pool tables are for those that are looking for something a bit different. The cabinets are designed in various artistic styles and they do come with a bit of a price tag to them. If you're lacking in space inside, did you know that you can get outdoor pool tables as well? If you don't have enough room inside for a pool table, then you can go for outdoor pool tables. These fantastic tables are made out of materials such as marine ply and they can take on anything the British weather has to throw at them. And finally, coin-operated tables. These are generally slate bed tables, the ones that you see in pubs and clubs. And nowadays, not only can you put a coin in to have a game, but also you can tap your card on the outside of them. And we call those contactless pool tables. In this section of the video, I want to talk about the room size that you need to have to accommodate the particular type of pool table you might be looking at. Now, the critical thing to know about this is that it's not just the overall length and width of the pool table that you need to accommodate in the room. You also have to consider the queuing room around each edge of the table. Now, the average size queue is five foot, so there's quite a lot of room to allow that to be drawn back and to make a shot. And I want to show you a quick cheat sheet where you can take any table you can find online and as long as you know the length and the width of that table, you can work out roughly the room size you need. 
Now the way it works is this. We want to find out from any measurement that we get of this table, length or width, we want to find out what the place surface dimensions are. And the reason we want to know that is because that's the first point at which the cue actually needs to make contact with the cue ball. So it means you can really squeeze the largest possible table into the room from that point. And the way we do that, again, this is just approximate, is once you know the length or the width measurement of a table, if you have a look at the top rail, that's all the top frame, as some people call it, and the cushion nose, you are looking at a roughly half a foot for the width of that. So if you then take the length of the table and you want to find out the play surface, what we actually do is we would add half a foot for the, the rail and the cushion here and half a foot at the other side, and we'd actually take off a foot from the overall length. So if we were looking at a British table, a British full-size pub standard table, you'd be looking at something that's seven foot in length by four foot in width. So the actual play surface where we've taken off that rail and cushions would be six foot long by three foot wide. And that's the point we want to do our measurement. So with that in mind, if we were to take a five foot cue, you would look at five foot from the wall to the tip of the cue. And then in this case, a six foot length in play surface, and then a five foot off the opposing wall for the cue. So that means when you add those together, five foot, six foot and five foot, we're looking at a 16 foot room for the length of that table. That'd be your minimum requirement to be able to play with that five foot cue. Same for the width. In this case, we were looking at a four foot wide table overall. We take off that foot again. So that's three foot with the five foot cue one side and the five foot cue the other. So that's 13 foot as a minimum requirement. But don't panic if that's looking a little bit too tight in your room because you don't have to go for a full size cue. You can go for a four foot size cue. Now by taking off that, just that foot in length by, of the cue, you're actually buying back a foot one side and a foot the other side. So your room size can be two foot slimmer than it would be before and you could still play with the same size table. So cue size really does dramatically decrease the amount of room you need. So that's the best way to do it. You can also go down to three foot cues if you like. Those are really kind of junior cues, but if there's just a small bit of tight queuing room, you can use that three foot cue in that position. But my advice would be that if it is looking too tight on a particular pool table size, go to the smaller size, simply because you'll have more enjoyment on the table and you very quickly get used to it being a slightly smaller size. Um, and that way you're not going to be sort of stabbing the queue into the walls just trying to accommodate that larger table. In this section, I want to talk to you about the differences between MDF versus slate bed tables. Now this tends to be a bit of a fork in the road for our customers when they're making decisions about which pool table style or type to go for. So I want to just quickly break down the differences between the two. So when we talk about MDF versus slate, we're primarily talking about the actual play surface that the balls roll on, and also that is clothed, of course. So MDF, as the name suggests, is using a sheet of MDF, normally around 15 millimeters to 18 millimeters thick for the balls to roll on. Whereas a slate bed table is using a piece of slate, literally a piece of rock that has been mined from a mountain. And that is certainly, without question, the purest way for the balls to roll, and you're going to get the most level surface that way. But MDF tables are not so bad. Um, they use quite a lot of supports these days underneath the MDF surface to make sure it's as level as it possibly can be. And also they sometimes laminate both sides of the MDF sheet to make sure that it can't bend or warp. So there's been quite good advances on that side of things. The other comparisons would be firstly weight. This is quite a critical one. So if you need your table to be moved aside after play or maybe even legs folded and put away after use, then you might want to go down the MDF route because generally an MDF table weighs between 50 to 80 kilograms, let's say, for a full-size table, where there's a slate bed table, you're looking at probably 250 kilograms upwards for that type of design. So straight away, it makes you decide whether you're going to want one or the other. The other things to consider is that MDF tables are made to a price point. So this means that firstly, they won't break the bank, but secondly, it means that you can expect slight quality reductions due to the price point they're trying to hit in the market. So 
Over the main things you would expect on a pool table, say pocket size, an MDF table, you'd be expecting the pocket sizes to be slightly more generous, more of an American size pocket, because the game's meant to be more sort of family fun and easier to, to hit. Whereas a slate bed table, especially British slate bed tables, you're looking at a tighter pocket uh, to play the British game. Uh, but of course, we do have American style slate bed tables. We're getting onto that later. The other thing to look out for is probably cushion response. Cushion response is developed not only by the sheer sort of weight of a table, but also it's the quality of rubber that they put on the nose of the cushion. So again, MDF tables at a price point, you would expect the cushion response not to be quite as zippy as you would on a slate bed table. And also due to the weight of it, it has a little bit more energy absorption than you would get on a, on a heavyweight slate bed table. The other thing to look out for is the, the cloth standard. So on a slate bed table, you're gonna get a very good quality cloth with maybe a nap on it on a, on a British table speed cloth on an American table. For, us, for an MDF table, they've probably gone for something between um, durability, speed, um, and nap. So generally that's because a slate bed table can be reclothed, where an MDF table cannot be reclothed. The only other thing really to note is, is the, um, the laminate or the capping over the body of the table, over the MDF core of the table. With a slate bed table, you can expect that to be quite a durable capping. Some of these tables are used in youth clubs and into pubs and things like that. MDF table, probably gonna be using a more basic laminate. Although the, the quality of the laminates out there and the different colors and designs are making MDF tables look really, really good. So in conclusion, if you think you need something that's on a really keen price point and you wanna move it around and it's for fun and you may wanna store it away after, after use, you probably want to start looking down the MDF route, and there's loads of great product lines within that. If you're looking for that more professional game, great, amazing cushion response, and uh, a very true roll on the bed, etc., then you want to go down the slate bed route. But remember, it really wants it's in, it wants to stay there, it's leveled in place, and that may be a consideration as well. So hopefully that gives you some insights to start investigating the two possibilities and find out which fork in the road you need to go down. Choosing a British standard table or an American standard table is a very important part of your decision making process. So what I want to do in this section is quickly run through the differences between the two games. We do have a video that goes into more depth on this subject, so I will keep everything fairly brief. An American table generally is larger than a British table. You tend to find American tables are built in an 8 foot or a 9 foot overall size, whereas a British table you'll normally find is 6 foot in length or 7 foot in length at full size. If you're in a pub league or something like that, you would be playing on a British 7 foot table. American tables do have some other quite distinct differences. One of those is the pocket size. American tables have a larger pocket size than a British table. Now part of the reason for that is because also the pool ball size is a difference. So an American table will have a two and a quarter inch pool ball, whereas a British table is played with a two inch pool ball and a one and seven eighth inch cue ball. Now although that quarter of an inch doesn't seem like a lot, it does make quite a difference and it means that the larger pool balls of an American table would not be appropriate for a British table pocket. So the game could be considered to be slightly easier on an American table, but bear in mind that they are longer and larger tables, so you still have to get the angles right over a longer distance. The other differences are things like the cloth style. So a British table will have a nap cloth. That means that the nap of the cloth actually runs, or the fibers run flat one way, but they would ruck up if you tried to push them the other way. This gives the ball a little bit more control. It's a slightly slower game. An American table uses a speed cloth, that's napless. It doesn't have the fibers running both ways. And so you can get a faster game with an American table. The only other thing to think about is things like the slate type. So an American table, because of the sheer size of the tables, they cut the slates into three pieces. A British table would have a single piece slate normally. Now, the reason this is important is because a single piece slate table could, in theory, be moved around if you really had to. If you had to move the table from one point of the room to another, you should be able to do so with enough people. But an American table, the three pieces of slate are actually, when, when the table is installed, are all laid together and then they're leveled up and they're then brought together and they're generally plastered as well. So that table really needs to stay in place. So, have a think about that because you don't want to have to have a table that has to continuously be professionally reinstalled if you need to move it. So ideally, it's meant to go in the room and stay in that position. 
So are British state bed tables, just as a side note, but they can be moved a bit more easily if they had to. The only other thing to mention is that the cushion type is slightly different on an American table compared to a British table. Cushions on the British table have a flat nose to them, whereas an American table they have a sharper point of rubber. And also the way that the cushion is cut into the pocket is slightly different. But again, we'll go into more detail on that on other videos. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the things to weigh up when you're looking at a British table versus an American. By this stage, you may have started to make your decisions on whether you'd like to go for an MDF bed table or a slate bed table, and if you'd like to go for a British table versus an American table. But there is one final thing to also consider, and that's if you'd like to go for a sports table or a dedicated pool table, or go for the dual use of a pool dining table. Now recently, pool dining tables have become ever more popular, and that's because not only can you play pool, but you can dine, and also you can use it as maybe an office or workstation in the home. So that dual use of space is certainly making them a very attractive prospect. Now there's not a lot of difference in the play quality of them, but I wanted to just run through a few of the differences. So firstly, cabinet. So a sports table, the cabinet will be designed solely around the pool table to support the slates and get the best performance out of the table. A pool dining table simply uses a shallower cabinet, and that is so when you're sitting around the table you can get your knees underneath it. The other difference is a pool dining table will come with dining tops. It's a very simple design. The dining tops actually sit on the pocket rubbers of the table, and this keeps them elevated from the top frames just by a couple of millimeters. And also, because they're on a rubber pocket, it generally means that you can't move the table, so the friction of the rubber also means the table is ready to use the minute you put them on. So those are the core differences, and although there might be some slight performance differences, they are very, very minimal these days. The more the pool dining table has evolved, the more the supports under the slate and the other considerations that a normal sports table would have towards making it a great playing table have been dealt with. So there's a decision that you have to make. Customers regularly ask us about how their particular pool table might be delivered. Now that really depends on the type of pool table that you've gone for, but the delivery will fall into three main categories. The first one is probably the most simple, which is where if you've gone for something like an MDF table, just due to the slightly lighter weight nature of those tables, they're normally packed up in all one box, that's all the accessories and the parts for the table, and they're designed for home assembly. And those tables will normally be delivered by either a single person courier or a two person courier. Now depending on the weight, either one will turn up. Although the tables are designed for home assembly, some models and some manufacturers will offer an assembly service. So do look out for that if it's something that you're interested in. If you go for a British slate bed table, this is a slate table with a single piece slate. We have a specialist two man team service for you. Now in this particular service you can choose two options. One is to have the table just simply delivered and the other one is to have the table delivered and installed. If you go for just standard delivery, the table will be delivered in generally four parts. That will be the top frame, the slate, the cabinet and the legs. And you would be expected to then install that table. The delivery guys will take the table into a ground floor room of choice. What we really recommend is you go for the installation service because these tables are very heavy and if you haven't had experience of putting them together before, there aren't particularly clear instructions and it will take a bit of time. With this service, the team will come into your room of choice, they'll assemble the table for you, level it, brush it down, make sure it's ready to go, and they'll also give you some tips on maintenance and things like that. Plus we incentivize with some additional accessories. In terms of lead time for slate bed tables, some of the slate bed tables we advertise will be in immediate stock. That way you'll have a certain choice of finish and size. However, other tables, if you'd like to choose maybe more exotic finishes or different cloth colors we don't have in stock at the time, would be built to order. So do look at the different lead times that you can get for standard British tables. The final and most specialized delivery that we also carry out generally applies to the larger American tables and luxury tables that we sell. For this particular type of table, the slates of the table are in three sections, and this requires a very specialist type of installation. The way it works is that the team will come in and they will kit build the table into your room of choice. They will then put all three slates on the top of the frame and they will join them together and level them. 
At that point, the table also has to be clothed on site. So it's worth noting that that type of installation can be up to three or four hours on site while they're putting the table together. And don't forget that that type of table is not to be moved around, otherwise the slates can come out of level. If you'd like your pool table to be delivered upstairs, that's absolutely fine and generally it's possible. However, there are some things you need to consider. Firstly, it's really important to take measurements to make sure that your cabinet or the largest part of the table will be able to fit up the stairs. Our salespeople are very experienced with this and can help you. You can send us pictures of your stairwells, you can send videos in of the access, and we can give you some really good advice of what size table we think will go through the gaps. The other thing to know is that we can kit build tables. So slate bed tables, single piece slate bed tables, generally come out of a factory pre-built. So the cabinets are quite large. If you imagine a seven foot size cabinet trying to go up the stairs. But what we can do is essentially flat pack those tables. We call it a kit build. So if you think the stairwell is going to be tight, you can opt for a kit build table. Now strangely, sometimes larger pool tables, such as American tables that go from eight foot up to nine foot in size, and even full size snooker tables that go up to 12 feet, can also be delivered upstairs. And that's because due to the size of those tables, they generally come in a kit formation. And critically, the large slates are cut into sections. Generally for an American table, it's a three-piece section of slate. So these larger tables can actually be navigated through quite tight stairwells and sometimes even more easily than a pre-built six or seven foot table. Other rules of thumb is that a six foot table generally is easier to get up the stairs if it's pre-built. That's simply because the table can go right up on its end to go through a doorway at the end of the passageway. That's the easiest way we can do it, where a seven foot table may not get through the threshold of the door. So plenty to consider when you're looking for your table to be delivered upstairs, but best thing to do is to give one of our sales people a call or an email just to check first, and then we can advise you the best way possible. You may be interested in what accessories come with your pool table. Now this is quite specific to each table and you can see on the listing the various items that you can expect to arrive, but in general every pool table that we sell will come with a basic starter kit so you can start playing. That usually consists of two cues, a triangle, chalk and a pool ball set. But I want to emphasize that they are basic. That means that there are better cues and there are better balls and those things like that out there. And it can be worth investing a little bit extra because you can really get the best out of your table that way. So let's start with cues. The basic set of cues you're going to get is a standard one piece cue, probably with a screw on tip. Now just for a 20 or 30 pound investment, you can go for an ash cue, you can get a glue on tip, you can get a finer tip for more spin and more control and the cue will glide better in your hand. And as it's the first thing that you touch before you play, it's really worth the extra spend. Secondly, you can get better quality pool balls. So the standard set you'll probably get with the table, unless you're going for maybe the more luxury tables, will be um, a normal set that is probably imported from the Far East. What I'd really recommend is going for Aramith pool balls. These are the standard set by a Belgium company called Saluk, and they produce the Aramith pool balls, and they are rounder, they're better, they're shinier, they have more longevity, and you'll get just a much nicer game from them. So again, it's just worth that extra investment as these are key parts of the game of pool. On top of that, a uh, slight diversion onto pool dining tables here, but if you have any dining tops on your table or any other tops that you bought with the table, you might want to consider a tabletop stand. And um, we provide a range of these, but it just gives you a place for the tabletops to go uh, so you don't have to lean them on the floor uh, or lean them up against the wall. So those can be quite nice and convenient. The other thing is if you're buying your table for uh, the family and you've got younger kids, it can be quite good to buy smaller or shorter cues or alternatively get cue rests and rest sticks. So this means that the kids can lean across on the table and they can reach some of those shots as they're growing up and the smaller cues can be a bit lighter for them to handle. So that's definitely worth considering, especially on the larger American tables. You might also want to consider snooker balls for your pool table. We actually provide a range of snooker balls that are the correct size for the various tables that we sell. And this gives you the opportunity to have another game on the table as well. 
Lighting is also something worth considering. I know it's something you would normally see in a pool hall, but there's some really nice designs out there and it's a really a great way, especially if your pool tables are going to be quite permanent in your home, it's a great way to focus a pool of light over onto the play surface. It makes it look really, really good and it's just a great way to get the best out of the game. And finally, you might want to consider something like a table tennis top. So we have a range of seven foot, eight foot and nine foot table tennis tops and they fit brilliantly on most pool table sizes. All you want to look out for is just to make sure you have an overlap because the net system will clip onto that. So generally, if you have a six foot pool table, for example, start with a seven foot table tennis top or up. So hopefully those are a few tips for you to be able to really enhance the purchase you've made and have even more fun.